Welcome back, everybody, to the Movie Social. I'm your co-host, Steph. Other co-host here, Ricky. Um, today, we will be doing a spoiler review of The Lost Bullet, which can be seen on Netflix. Uh, it came out yesterday, uh, June 19th. And um, we're going to get into the you know, spoiler review. Before we do that, please subscribe, like the video, drop a comment, anything to engage with us regarding this movie or any other movie suggestions that you have. So, um, we're going to get into The Lost Bullet and the premise is as uh, it's going to be a criminal or a delinquent who does something and then he goes to jail for what he did and while he's in jail he comes across cops who want him to become a mechanic because they found they seen what he did with the little car. So to, to give some um, some details, he was trying to rob, was it a jewelry store, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he had like a little, let's just say, for example, I don't know exactly what kind of car it was, but let's just say like a Toyota Honda. Like everybody knows a Toyota Honda. Yeah, more like a Prius. But what he did was he juiced it up to where it went through like four or five stores and it was sturdy. Like it didn't... It didn't like crumble up or anything like that. Suffer, he didn't suffer any damage. Yeah, he didn't suffer any so damage. The, that car was sound. Yeah, so they wanted to do that to you know him to do that for their cars. But when they go on these drug busts to try to stop these people with these go fast cars, which basically is sort of like uh, Fast and the Furious with the uh, nitrogen or whatever they call uh, they called nitrous. That's what it was. Where they you know tap the button made the car go, car go faster. Um, so he decides to be on their team, um, or not decide, it was kind of like a work release program that helped him reduce his time. Um, and, you know, he's doing a good job on the team, he's with them for a couple, of, I think nine months, where the, uh, the sergeant of the team decides, listen, you've been doing really, really good, you release papers, you go, your sentence is reduced, it ends next week, and when it ends, I want you to be the like i want you to stay on our team as the mechanic so excuse me so as the movie progresses they um go to a shop for like a bust to because he said that he found someone that um that he knew the the sergeant said listen these these speed boosts you're the only person who knows about it that i know and he's like well the guy that i was with who ran off knows about it as long as you don't, you know, hurt him or whatever the case may be, or take him in, he's like a little brother to me. I'll tell you where I'll tell you about. Him. They found him, goes to the shop, and there is when the movie actually starts to pick up, because um, it's a it's, yeah, it's a setup to where the cops come, the the, the partners of the sergeant, and oh, man, he, he even called them too. Yeah, he called them to say, hey, listen, just in case something goes down, I need you to be. There. They get there. When he's basically in, they they, they stop, they, they they bust the people essentially, and in the process of them leaving, I believe he was leaving, yeah, for them to take care of what was left there, he ends up getting shot. They killed him. And they him. killed him in cold blood, and tr basically they're going, they basically uh, framed our main character, which his name was Lino, Lino, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they frame him, and he basically goes on the run. To try to uh, clear his name, um, and bring the real killers to justice. Yeah, the, the, and bring the real killers to justice. Um, the main part, the main flow, or the main thing, what there was quick before again, the movie, the name of the movie is The Lost Bullet. They take the sergeant, took his car, and set it on fire. But what Lino does is when he finds out that you know they did this, he goes back to the garage looks at the car while it after it was burned up and realized that yo listen you left out a whole major meat in the middle what meat okay so what all right. yeah after he gets shot by one of his own partners are you talking about the fighting scene uh, yes <laughs> Lingo once with his gun with the attack oh, that was okay. murdered his gun to a gas station basically or whatever you want to call it was it. a gas station Demands to get to use the phone there. Mind you, it's cops in the back. He don't know that. Yeah, of course he didn't know, but come on. Look, check your surroundings before you enter. So, he's trying to call the other detective, Julia, who he had to think with. And it's the only one he trusts because everybody else he yeah. found out is guilty and dirty. Other than so, the uh, sergeant guy. Yeah, who was killed. 
But in the midst of him trying to call her, she doesn't pick up the other cops that see him there. They arrest him. Go takes him to the station. <laughs> Lo and behold, who shows up? And not Julia. The cop killer, aka the cop that killed the other cop. Churro, whatever his name was. He tells him, okay, we're gonna do it this way. These other guys showed up, they shot and killed them. You ran off with his gun out of fear, trying to save your own life. Dude's like, mm -mm, I'm not talking, I'm not saying none of that. You did it. You going to jail for this. You did it. dirty. Especially knowing he was supposed to be getting released a week later for time served for helping them. They already had his parting papers and everything already out there. So, while he eventually breaks free from the cuffs, tied him into the chair, and goes on a rampage inside the police station, knocks off every single cop, gets to the door just for them to wind up grabbing him, dragging him back. But then he grabs the uh, mace. Bear base. And sprays it all over the place and was able to escape. And then it goes on to him going back to the uh, precinct. Now, that scene itself was wild and crazy. I like that scene. It was a good scene. It was really action packed. It was reminiscent of those Fast and Furious uh, Hobbs and Shaw moments. It was a very. I mean, the reason why I left it out because it was like, to me, it wasn't a main plot point. I mean, it wasn't like, a main plot point, but it, it had. It set a major. Yeah, it showed you that he he was. You could have just stayed in there and got. Yeah, it, it showed you that he was a fighter essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He and was fighting for his life at that point, yeah. right then and there. So um, he gets to the car, realizes that the car isn't the sergeant's car. Um, I mean, you couldn't see that it wasn't the sergeant's car. It was clearly a, a white vehicle. I don't care if you're burning a vehicle; it still has the same color burn. If anything, it would have been blacker, but it was white. No, his car was red. Though. No, I'm talking about his car was red, but the car that they burnt and towed into the station was white. Well, into the hangar, because they, they were working out of a hangar. Yeah, the, the, the uh, garage or whatever. Yeah, their uh, secret uh, operative room. But yeah, you can take it from there. So, he runs into Gloria there. Well, I'm sorry, Julia, not Gloria. <laughs> I don't know where I got Gloria from, but yeah, into Julia there. Tries to convince her that he's not guilty he's innocent and that the other cops did it and are trying to frame him she at the time does not really know no, what to think no. other than the fact that she just lost her sergeant so she starts to attack him and trying to put him to sleep she almost fully succeeds except for the fact that he was able to get one of her hands and cuff using her handcuffs cuff her to one of the vehicles and so he's able to escape from there and then goes out to try and find out what's going on where's this real car at but like an idiot he goes back to the scene of the crime to get caught back by the same criminals <laughs> while his friend who's like a brother to him who got him into all this to begin with is just looking like man i don't know what i can do to help you buddy he's on his knees at this point now shotguns to his head they call in, they call the cops back, letting them know, yeah, we found them. They tell them, all right, hold them there. We, we're on our way. Yeah. And this time, the boss, well, the criminal's boss, is ready to go. So he tells uh, one guy, let's go. While the other guy's about to put uh, our main character, you know, into the trunk, the other dude rams the car backwards, knocking the boss out the back of the car. Through the windshield, because no seat belts. Seat belts, people. <laughs> seat belts is for your safety, rather than a front or back seat. And this movie proves it a lot, <laughs> quite a bit. So the dude goes flying out the back of the car, knocks him out. And if this cat don't stop getting in the video, I'm going to get you down, Lily. Anyway, so yeah, after that, that provides the distraction that he needs, that uh, you know needs to knock the other guy out with the trunk. And so they put them both in the trunk and take off. But the other guy's like, oh, while they're driving. Yeah, I know where they put, put the car at. I'm the one who put it there. They told me to put it there. Nobody else knows where it's at. He stops the car like, really? Are you really kidding me right now? This whole time you knew where it was at? 
And then so, okay, they go on off to the place to try to find it. Meanwhile, the cops show up. They find the dudes in the truck. They kill the so-called boss, Point Blank Branch. Like, yeah, we're the ones running the show now. Other guy tries to take off and run. Only to still to get caught inside their uh, little garage. And then he's trying to save his own life. He gives away that they still have the vehicle and where it's at. But he still winds up getting killed. And might I say, it was not an easy, quick kill. Because he ran out of shotgun bullets. So he used the, the uh, butt of the gun to beat him to death in the head. And they actually show that scene after the, after the fact. Yeah. Squash too. Yeah. Alright, All right, so, so the guy doesn't show. Mm -hmm. Tell his partner that they still have the car out there. So, partner goes back to the station with uh, their uh, captain. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to just go off to this place and get the car myself. Because I don't trust you fully either. Because you're killing off everybody else that's related to this and knows all this. So... I gotta protect myself from my own interests. Mm -hmm. I think his name was Marco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, Marco winds up meeting up with our uh, so-called uh, criminal here. Not yeah. yet. There was one part before that. Uh, with yeah, one, that's right there. When they went to go meet up with um, Julia. Julia. They, uh, yeah, there is a part between in between there. Okay, so what caused Mark? What caused? Uh, the captain to leave the scene along with the other criminal was they spotted Julia inside some type of a farmer's market or whatever with Lino, Lino and his friend because these other detectives that was telling her found her but she winds up letting Lino and them get away in her car while slashing the other cop's tires and they arrest her so now she's basically a suspect at this point conspiring with them so they make a beeline to the vehicle. She told she told them bring back the evidence that will clear his and her name at this point. So they take her back to the state to the hangar where the captain starts to interview her. At the same time, uh, Marco, who's one of the uh, cops' partners, the criminal cops' partners, goes to the uh, same place that Leon is. Lino, sorry, <laughs> shit, I'm thinking of snowfall. <laughs> All right, as Lino is at, and so what they do is they go into the bar looking for the car. No car's there. So Lino talks to asks his friend like, "Yo, where's the car? What's going on?" Meanwhile, the friend is in the house, just going to grab all the money, the duffel bag full of money and the drugs. So that's basically what he came there for. He didn't care about the car at all. The uh, friend walks out the house, bang, shotgun straight to the chest. Marco is there. So, Lino and Marco have it out, duke it out. I don't know how. This man is truly a fighter for his life. Lino winds up knocking this guy out, shooting him in his bulletproof vest with the gun, or with the shotgun, and handcuffing him to some uh, furniture fixture so that he can't get away from. And then finds his friend, who somehow managed to not die instantly, but crawl closer to the vehicle and let a, let him know that the vehicle was buried under a whole pile of horse manure. And hey, it was hay and horse manure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was horse manure anyway. It was disgusting. So he pull, he gets the car out of there. Doesn't really know whether or not the evidence is it still there or not, but he looks. Lo and behold, the bullet's still there. At first he thought it wasn't, but he took a second look at the scene he was there calls Juliet on Marco's phone but he does not know Juliet has yet been caught and so the other cop has taken Juliet's phone already out of the evidence bag which that was no no to begin with I don't know how the captain allowed him to walk away with that bag but okay so he was like okay well that's what I got now and I have the evidence that proves that you guys killed him. And mind you, this guy doesn't know that the car still is, exists. He thinks the burnt up car is really the actual vehicle. So he's fuming and pissed off at this point now. He tells everybody, whoever finds him gets a spot on the team now. <laughs> so they go take all the vehicles, go block off the road and all that. Meanwhile, Leon 
Lino <laughs> is devising a plan with the vehicle on how to get it in there as evidence to the captain. This is when it turns to twisted metal. Yeah. So he fixes the vehicle with some metal. I don't know. Forklift. Fork. It, I mean, it was a makeshift forklift, honestly, that he put onto the truck. Oh, well, not the truck, but the car. Boosted it up a little bit more to, to fix, tweak the engine a bit, so that way it's even faster. It maxes out over like what 200 or something yeah. miles per hour. So he tops off at that gas station, which I fo thought was a funny scene. These, these white people there staring at him because he's all cut up, bruised up from the fight, looking at him like, "Fuck!" And oh, and then, and then they was also looking at the front of the car. Uh huh. And he's like, "It's for a movie." And so then they somebody calls in to tip the cops off, letting them know. Uh, the, yeah, they uh, the gas station. The gas station. Yeah. Again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he's on his way now, back to the garage. Well, to the anger. He doesn't know that they got a barricade, but I mean, he does suspect something is going on. And then, lo and behold, there's cops behind him too. Well, a lone vehicle behind him. So they basically pull off, pull a fast and furious chase going on on the highway. He somehow hides in front of this semi pickup truck. And I don't know how dumb they had to be to not realize that he really hid and was behind them. But yeah, he winds up going behind them now. Uses the forklift thing to pull their back tire completely off. So one, they have no brakes, no nothing, no control of the vehicle anymore. You the back axle. Like just yeah, took the, the whole thing came right off. The trunk, all of that went right off. Then he hooks back onto the vehicle and controls it from that yeah, point on and just puts the pedal to the metal. You can hear as they get close to the barricade, the cops ready on in. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! That the dude's like, what? What you say? You gotta stop speaking fast. Speak slower. Next thing you know, he's saying, don't shoot. And then they see the car coming. What do you say? Shoot! Shoot! And they just start shooting bullets. Luckily, nobody was shot during this part, but yeah, they, they felt it though. Whams right into the car. Their car, the car that was hooked on the Leon's car, Lino's car. I'm gonna get it right before we put the videos on. The car that's hooked on the Lino's car flips over, does a 360 completely. They come spewing out the vehicle slightly. The other cops go to check out to see whether or not they're okay while he's still zooming down the road. Other cop gets in the car chasing after him, of course, because he wants. That evidence destroyed. Takes a grenade with them in the process. Would you really call that a grenade, though? I mean, to me, I thought it was a flashbang or one of them. Uh, what is it? The uh, there's a grenade that actually that they use to burn things. Uh, That's probably what it was because it didn't like it didn't. It didn't blow. It's one of them. It had to be one of those. Whatever it was called. Uh, crap. It's some type of uh, magnesium type magnesium grenade. That's what it is. That's what it had to be because it, it didn't like blow it up or whatever. We didn't get to that part. But yes, but yeah. Yeah, so comes over the radio to the captain that uh, that car that she believes is gone was spotted. Mind you, Julia told her that, okay, you don't believe me, but when you find, when they find the evidence, you then you have no choice but to believe and you can't deny that you weren't told that, that this happened. So she see she gets the radio call that that car has been spotted, and she's like, "What? What car?" And then all of a sudden, it's like, "Okay, I believe now." She goes to tell Ju uh, Julia, "Okay, take your car. I don't care how beat up it is. You gotta go help and stop him from getting to Lino." And so she thinks she's gonna also go in her car too to help pursue this other cop. But Julia had other plans. She took her car and speeds off to go out. Now this is a full-blown need for speed type of chase happening now. Fast but the cops are but the cops are on the bad guy's side essentially. Lino. The cops are on his side essentially. Yeah, at this point now. All the cops were on his side because the evidence has come to truth and come to light that he was not lying. But and now he has to just still stay alive and keep the evidence alive. Because the other dude is on his tail, like hard, and this uh, sells a Mercedes too, wasn't it? Yeah, that that the uh, cop was driving. One of the ones that Lino fixed and suited up. 
Mm -hmm. So they're chasing down through the city, around the waterbed and all. Two patrol cars come in pursuit to try and help separate them two to keep the evidence safe. He just rams the patrol cars with the other police vehicle just like, out of my way, I don't care about y'all. At this point, I gotta get this evidence out of here. I can just say, hey, it was his fault that y'all got hit. And then Julie comes into play, catches up to them. So at this point, it looks like Uno might be a gunner, like literally, because he's getting rammed, everything. That's, those two car vehicles is different sizes, but Julie is like, okay, I got your help here. You break, I'm going to ram him. And these cars right there, we're just going to flip him. Basically, they did just that. Seatbelts, people. Yes. Everybody, you must wear your seatbelt. Even though she, Julia had her seatbelt, she lived, but she got messed up badly. He got messed up, too. Did but he have a seatbelt on? Yeah, all of them had a seatbelt on. Okay. Lino winds up uh, being able to stop. He goes to check on Julia. She's okay, but she's, he then sees the cop getting out the vehicle. He goes over to the helm and starts punching him a few times. But the cop, at the same time, gets to... A magnesium grenade off and tosses it to the trunk of the evidence vehicle from the sergeant and it cuts, starts catching fire Lino looks at it and like fuck I gotta do something what to do he's still meanwhile beating the hell out of this, this cop's face then he just lets him go and just takes off in the car to try and put the fire out as if he can while driving it to the hangar and now Again, seatbelts, everybody. Seatbelts, people. He rams right into the hangar, goes through the windshield. They want to put the fire out. He luckily <gasps> wakes up, is alive. Little burns here and there, bruises, banged up, hurt badly. But they quickly get forensics in there. They were able to pull out the bullet slug, match it. Meanwhile, somehow, this cop gets away from that crime scene, goes to his house, sees his wife and child in the backyard playing, goes upstairs, grabs all the hidden corrupt cash from the drug deals, and just from what they allude to, just tries to leave and flee the country. Mm -hmm. They flash forward to maybe like a day, a week or so later, to Lino going back into the hangar to meet the cap, uh, meet with the captain, who gives him the pardon for time served and has it notarized that he is now a free man and but tells Julie to hand it to him because she doesn't want to, to but to make sure he stays in town just in case they still need him for anything and so him and Julie basically walk off into the sunset we still don't know what happened with the other cop hence why I think there could be a part two coming out I hope so because it was good but we never know could be. Was a hell of a movie. For an hour and a half, it, it definitely packed a punch, I would say. I'm definitely telling y'all, watch it if you had not. I mean, if you wanted to listen to us talk about a spoiler first before watching, that's up to you, but hey, you should have watched this first. Mm -hmm. But don't forget to let us know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. All right, yep. Thanks, thanks for watching. All right, see you guys. Oh, my God.